fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Mountain City. I'll sell uh, the Stagecoach swayed and bumped along the trail to Mountain City. There were two passengers, both men. One of them was heavy. His clothes were perfectly tailored, and a great diamond sparkled on the ring in his left hand. There was an air of strength about him, of power. Here was a man accustomed to command. His companion was lean and hard, but equally well-dressed. His eyes were narrowed and his jaws set as he examined the papers from the portfolio on his knees. Are these all? Yes. Every letter I received from my two late and unlamented managers. <laughs> what do you think of them? They made a mess of things. Obviously. Will you be able to profit by their mistakes, Driscoll? I hope so, Mr. Webster. Well, don't be polite and don't call me Mr. Webster. My name's Jake. If you have any doubts, you aren't the man for the job. I can handle it. Well, that's better. It may take a little time to get things running smoothly. Well, that I grant you. Webster Fur Company has managed to acquire a bad name in Mountain City. It looks to me as if most of the trappers are selling to the Great Western Company. Yes. What do you know about this Collins woman who runs it? She's an old battle axe. It's smart. Her husband used to run the post. He never made a success of it if it hadn't been for her. One of the letters mentioned a daughter. Yes, yeah, she's going to marry the town marshal. He's one of the men you must take care of, Driscoll. Mm. Both Sedley and Turner tried to do that. Yeah, their methods were crude. Personally, I always try to buy a man before I kill him. What if the man has no price? Never found that to be true. Every man has his price. It may not be money. There's also power, reputation, or perhaps the safety of someone who's near and dear to him. I see. But if you ask me, the man we must take care of first is the Lone Ranger. He wears no badge. He doesn't have to. I always like to have the law in my pocket. If Johnny Maitland is taking orders from me, then the Lone Ranger can't touch us. You may be right. I'm always right. Of course, you're the manager of the Webster Company in Mountain City. You're responsible for everything that happens there, so naturally you must make your own decisions. However, I have a suggestion. What? Call on Ma Collins as soon as you get in town. Deplore the unfortunate practices of her predecessors. And assure her that you intend to be a friendly rival. <laughs> I understand. Above all, get friendly with the daughter. It's only through Madge Collins you can get to Johnny Maitland. Well, there he goes, Tonto. The 
Jacob Webster will be in Mountain City for another hour. Uh, you wait a long time for him. It'll be worthwhile if we can only tie him up with some of his crooked schemes and send him to jail. Uh, the message from the girl said there would be another man with him. You'll have to find out who he is. And toddle right into town. New manager, I suppose. Well, there's one thing we can be sure of. And what's that? He's in Webster's confidence, and he isn't to be trusted. Watch every move he makes. Uh, time to do that. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. following morning, Walter Driscoll met Madge Collins in the post office. I beg your pardon. I dropped this letter. Oh, thank you. May I introduce myself? I know who you are. Now, if you don't mind, Please, I... Miss Collins. After the past month, I don't blame you for having a poor opinion of the Webster Company. Of course, I am connected with it. But please believe this. Sedley and Turner acted without the knowledge of Mr. Webster. He had no part in any of their crooked deals. The Lone Ranger thinks he did. The Lone Ranger's mistaken. Mr. Webster's just as happy as you are that Sedley and Turner are in jail. Driscoll, there's only one way for you to prove your company's on the level. I know that. Actions speak louder than words. That's right. We'll have to wait and see what your methods are like. Fair enough. But I want things to be harmonious in Mountain City from the very beginning. I want to assure your mother that she won't have any more trouble with us. I'll tell her what you say. As a gentleman, I really ought to call on her. Well, Ma's usually in the store. All you have to do is open the door and walk in. Well, I'm going to take that as an invitation. I don't like to be unfriendly to anybody. But after what we've been through, I... I've already told you that I don't blame you. You wait and see, Miss Collins. Things are going to be all... Is this man making any trouble? No, Johnny. Mister, my name is Maitland. I'm the marshal here. Before you start anything, I want to warn you that you won't get away with it. (laughs) Well, Mr. Webster told me that I wouldn't be exactly welcome in Mountain City... But I didn't expect a reception like that from an officer of the law. I'm talking straight. I'll be watching you every minute. Johnny. What's more, Madge is my girl. I don't say it's against the law for you to talk to Well, I should hope not. Just the same, it gets my dander up. So maybe you'll find it healthier if you don't. That's enough, Johnny. That's all I want to say right now. I don't like being told who I can talk to and who I can't. I wasn't telling you, I was telling him. It amounts to the same thing. Goodbye, Mr. Driscoll. You're welcome at the store any time you want to call. (laughs) Goodbye, Miss Collins. What's that you said, Madge? What do you mean, invite him? Oh, keep quiet, John. What are you mad about? (laughs) The course of true love. I'll have to tell Jake about this. My call on Mrs. Collins can wait until tomorrow. (laughs) I thought you'd like to hear about it. So the girl is independent. Oh, very. Now, our friend Johnny didn't even understand why she was mad. Walt... You aren't bad looking. Your manners are good. I wonder. No, no thanks, Jake. I'm just thinking out loud. Help sometimes. How could we take advantage of it if there were a fight between Madge and Johnny? They're not going to fight about me. Johnny shoots too straight. No, no, of course not. They're not going to fight at all. You're the one who's going to stop them. What? This is your chance to get in good with Johnny. I don't see how. You're going to talk to him like a big brother. You're going to advise him just how to handle a girl so she won't kick over the traces. That sounds all right, but I don't pose as any authority. Well, see what you think of this for advice. It may not work, but it won't hurt Johnny to try it. It's sure pretty along this trail, isn't it, Madge? It sure is. You know, I wouldn't have blamed you if you hadn't gone riding with me this morning. Why shouldn't I? I've been thinking about yesterday morning at the post office. Oh, let's forget about it. <laughs> I must have sounded awful conceited. Just like I had a right to order you around or something. Oh, I understand that you didn't mean anything by it. You were just afraid that Walter Driscoll might be like Sedley or Turner oh, and then... shucks, Madge. Even so, you got a lot more sense than I have. If he is like those crooks, you could figure it out without any help from me. Yes, Johnny. I'm pretty sure I could. <laughs> what right did I have? I just didn't think that, so... You surprise me. Do I? Yes, Johnny. I couldn't explain why I was mad yesterday, but you've certainly made it clear today. It was pride and nothing more. As long as you do give me credit for a little common sense, Johnny, I forgive you. Oh, that's great. And listen, Madge, what do you think about Driscoll? Well, you're a lawman. According to the law, a man's innocent until he's been proven guilty. That's right. He's going out of his way to be friendly. Wouldn't have to do that. Not at all. 
It'll be a grand thing for all of us if he does turn out to be honest and decent. Shall I call off the feud? Oh, give him a chance anyway. He knows. <laughs> Your advice was good, Jake. Johnny and I are pals. What about the Cullens, girl? Very friendly. And the old lady? We had a long talk this afternoon. She invited me for supper tomorrow night. That's fine. Yeah, so far, so good. But what happens next? Supper tomorrow night, huh? Yeah. Walt, one of the reasons I've got so far is that I know the law. Laws regarding slander and libel. All the statutes protecting a man's reputation. I never knew you bothered much about that. No, I do when it means money in my pocket. Now, here's my idea, Walt. In my opinion, it ought to work. At supper the following night, Driscoll was silent and ate very little. Ma Collins did her best to find out what was wrong with him. Oh, now, come on. Tell us what's on your mind, Driscoll. Must be some reason why you're turning up your nose at my biscuits. Well, they're fine, Mrs. Collins. Only way you can prove that is by eating some of them. I am. <laughs> He's saving up for your pie, Ma. <laughs> I told him it couldn't be beat this side of the Mississippi. <laughs> why, oh, I, I haven't got much appetite tonight. You don't have to tell us that. What's wrong, Mr. Driscoll? I haven't any right to be here. Well, you got invited, didn't you? What do you mean? Well, I feel like a traitor, that's all. You people have been so kind to me, and I appreciate it, but... But what? I've got to tell you. I can always quit my job. Hmm? You've heard my defending Jacob Webster. Time and again, I've insisted that he had nothing to do with the crooked work of his agents. Yes? I've changed my mind about that. He's no better than they are. You got any proof? The proof of my own ears. And you've got to be warned. That's all that matters. I don't care what happens to me. Well, out with it, man. What are you talking about? He's hired some outlaws to raid Mrs. Collins' warehouse. Oh, no. The ordinary coyote. When, Driscoll? I'm not sure about that, but it's going to be soon. We'll be ready for him. I'll keep deputies posted around the warehouse, Ma. We'll capture the crooks, and when we get them, we get Webster, too. Might even be tonight. Maybe I better have a look around. Oh, there's no sense in that. Outlaws aren't going to ride into town so soon after dark. You finish your supper. And listen. Yeah, mighty loud talk, and it's coming from over by the warehouse. I'm going with you, Johnny. You be careful. Don't shoot till you make sure who it is. Johnny, there'll be a gang. Get your men. You got a gun? Yes. There they are, trying to bust in the back way. They're going for the horses, Johnny. And mine's around in the corral. Uh, they're getting away. Stop in the name of the law. It's no use. I'll be dogged. Johnny, are you all right? Sure, I'm all right, but those pole cats got away. They were trying to break in the back door. No, Mother. I'd just like to lay my hands on the sneaking crooks. Well, there's no chance of that now. You can still get Webster. Webster? He's the one who hired them. Yeah, that's right. And you heard him, didn't you? I heard him. But Mark Collins would have to make the charge. It's her warehouse. That suits me. You could do it tonight. Come on down to the office with me, Ma. You can swear out a warrant and we'll put Webster behind bars pronto. Who's there? It's a marshal. Open up in the name of the law. <laughs> I got a warrant for your arrest. Is that so? Right here. I believe you, Marshal. What's the charge? Hiring outlaws to raid Mrs. Collins' warehouse. I deny it. That won't do you any good. We got proof. Proof from your own manager. From Driscoll? Where is he? You'll see him at your trial. Come on along. You're going to march me down the main street to the jail? I sure am. Hundreds of people will see us. You realize, of course, the damage it'll be done to my reputation. Mister, you haven't got any reputation left. Get a move on. Well, you're the marshal. I'll have to obey. We're going to put you where you belong, with Sedley and Turner, behind the bars. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Tonto was in Mountain City when Webster was marched the length of the main street and locked up in the jail. Then the faithful Indian mounted his horse and rode out of town and into the hills. At last he reached the camp where the Lone Ranger was waiting for him. And after he had told the masked man the news... Here, Silver. Now, what you do? I'm going to get settled and ride back to town with you, Tonto. I've got to find out more about this arrest. Now, Tonto, tell you all him no. Uh, these outlaws, did they actually break into the warehouse? Ah, them break door open. Then Johnny start to shoot, them right way. Oh, I don't like the sound of it. Why did they make their raid so early in the evening? They were heard inside Mrs. Collins' house. They must have been making a lot of noise. Why? There are plenty of them. Well, no matter how many, they'd try to keep quiet if they didn't want to be caught... There, uh, steady, Silver. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Steady, Silver. Oh, steady, boy. Oh. Johnny's in his office, Kimosabe. You take the horses around and back. Uh-huh. Time to do it. Good evening, Johnny. Yes, man. I got good news for you. I wonder if you have. Jake Webster's in jail, just where you always said he belonged. Yes, I've heard about it. But an arrest like this can be dangerous if you don't have enough proof to back it up. Well, we got the word of his own manager. Ain't that enough? Not unless you have it in writing. Well, he'll make out an affidavit if we want it. You mean to say he's ready to testify against a man he works for? He never found out the kind of hombre Webster is until today. That doesn't sound likely. He must have it. What is it, Tato? Drisk will come this way now. You want him to see you? No, not yet. That's your bedroom in there, isn't it, Johnny? Yeah, but... We'll wait in there until he goes. Well, you got him all wrong, mister. He's on the level. I believe that when I see his affidavit. What can happen anyway? We haven't got enough proof against Webster. He goes free, but... Oh, Driscoll, I'm glad you've come. I want you to sign an affidavit about Webster. Get it down in black and white, just what you heard. Johnny, I've made an awful mistake. Huh? You've got to let Webster out right away. Well, not on your tin tank. You've got to. I was wrong. You were wrong? Yes. I thought I heard him talking to those crooks in the back room of the Moosehead Cafe. I didn't see him, you understand? I, I only heard him. Yeah? But I didn't, Johnny. Al Whitney, you know him, he runs the Moosehead. He just told me that Jake Webster hadn't been in his place all day long. I'll be doggone. This is serious. You've got to set him free. It's going to be bad enough for me. I'll probably lose my job. But it's going to be worse for Mrs. Collins if he stays in there any longer. What can happen to her? What are you talking about? Webster can sue her for false arrest, for damaging his reputation. He can take every penny she has. Lee Pun Cactus, where are those keys? You should have been sure before you said anything. I still say it sounded like him. Your whole scheme is clear now, Tonto. We don't have to stay around here any longer. Um, where we go? The Great Western Warehouse. Webster planned his own arrest. Driscoll talked Mrs. Collins into swearing out the warrant. Now he can sue her for damages. Uh, him get much money? If he wins, he can take her business away from her. Mm, that'd be plenty bad. There's only one thing in our favor. The county seat is at Salt Lake City. We'll have to go there to start suit. There isn't a stage leaving until tomorrow morning. It gives us a little time to stop him. How you do that? I don't know yet. I'll look at the warehouse first. Steady, big fella. <coughs> Come on, Silver. Get him up to the count. They broke the lock, all right. Let's see if they disturbed anything inside. Uh, oh, the ladder on the wall. He must have it. Better we not make light. There are men right up to house. Keep back in the doorway. Johnny, one of them. Yes. The others look like Webster and Driscoll. Them go inside. There's a window open. We get close enough to hear them. All right. That explains everything, I guess. Your manager tricked us. No, Mrs. Collins. You did. It was only a mistake. I'm sorry that I misjudged Mr. Webster, and I'm sorry that he won't be more lenient with you. If you two didn't work this out together, you wouldn't be speaking to each other now. Mr. Webster, can't you just forget about the whole thing? After all, it was your own manager that made the mistake. That won't do any good, Johnny. Ma's right. It wasn't a mistake. How much are you going to sue for, Webster? $50,000. <laughs> That's just about what I thought. You'll take the business, lock, stock, and barrel. That's right. The Great Western Company can't be worth more than 50000 However, I'd have to leave Mountain City to start suit. Mean traveling all the way to Salt Lake. Well, that'd be inconvenient. There's a way to settle this out of court. How? I'll buy the company for 5,000 cash. Only 5,000? Waive all my claims against Mrs. Collins. 
You can take it or leave it. Better take it. 5,000 is better than nothing. It'd mean giving up without a fight, and I won't do that. Well, think it over, Mrs. Collins. Stage leaves in the morning. If I don't hear from you, well, come on, Frisco. <laughs> Go, Kimosabe. Come on, back to the warehouse. Uh, you think maybe Mrs. Collins changed mine? Take 5,000? No, Tonto. We aren't going to let her. What's that? Uh, Webster's confident he can win his suit because there's no proof he had any connection with the raid on the warehouse. Mm, that's right. It'd be a different story if we found some. Um, how you do that? Webster used a trick. We may have to do the same thing. Here we are. Uh, Tonto Light Lantern. Does it look as if anything's been touched? No. What I'd like to find is something that's valuable, all not too bulky. All furs in here, some supplies, blankets. Well, it's got to be something that's easily identified. That a great many people know belongs to Mrs. Collins. Here, Kimasabi, you come this way. Tonto to show you two pelt. Black fox. Miss Collins pay fifty dollars. Here. Oh, they're beauties, Tonto. Uh. No other pelts like these come to Mountain City this year. That'll do, Kimasabi. Oh, your go. hands. It's all right, Johnny. Oh, it's you, Mass Man. I saw the light from the house and decided to investigate. Webster and Driscoll were just here, and that ornery coyote's going to... You don't have to tell us. Todd and I were outside, and we heard everything. But uh, Mrs. Collins isn't going to lose her business. You think she ought to take that offer he made? No. We have a plan that's worth a try. I don't see how you... Now then, listen. This will need your help and the help of all your deputies. We're going to beat Webster by using his own methods. looking back toward Mountain City. I've been expecting to see Johnny Maitland riding after us. Why should he do that? To tell us that Mrs. Collins had changed her mind. Better give up hope. She's decided to be stubborn. It's the same as... Yes, I know. It'd be nice to get the Great Western Company for 5000 The lawsuit may cost us nearly that much, and we lose the profits of the company during all the time it drags on. But we're sure to win. Don't forget that. Jake, there is somebody riding after us. Well, let me see. Not one horse, there are two of them. I can see the men now. And one of them is masked. Yes. A masked man and an Indian. Driver, whip up your horses. There are a couple of outlaws on our trail. That's all right, Mr. Webster. That's the Lone Ranger, Toto. Lone Ranger? Well, let me get a look at him. He's riding a beautiful horse. We haven't heard anything of him since we got to Mountain City. I'd hoped he'd left the country. Why is he coming after us? Well, maybe he isn't. Maybe he just happened to be riding this trail. Green up, Bob. Don't pay any attention to him. Drive on. That's all right, Mr. Webster. This is the Lone Ranger. Oh, oh there, boy. Oh, oh there. Oh, Lone Ranger's word seems to be law. Very silver steady. <laughs> Up on top there with the baggage, Tonto. You'll find plenty of cover. Uh, how to do it. What's the meaning of this? Now, well, there's a band of men riding after you. They're only back a little way. Now, you don't have a chance to get away from them, but we may be able to fight them off. And what if we don't choose to fight? You want to lose that diamond ring? Well, I don't want to be shot, that's certain. You won't be in danger. Just keep down the floor of the stage. You see them yet, Tonto? Uh. Then come now. You have plenty of ammunition, Bob? Uh, wait a minute. Hold your fire. What's the matter? Those no, men are right outlaws. It's the marshal and his deputies. That's right, Kimosabe. False alarm, Webster. There's nothing to worry about. Why would Maitland bring his men? Howdy, nice men. Morning, Johnny. Webster, I want a word with you. Did uh, Mrs. Collins send you? Yeah, sort of. She's been checking through her warehouse, and there's a couple of fox pelts missing. Fox pelts? What's that to me? Mrs. Collins figures they were taken last night. So just to make sure you had nothing to do with the raid, we're going to search your baggage. You are not. Are you afraid? Afraid? Don't be absurd. I haven't got any pelts in my baggage, and even if I did, what would it prove? These were mighty special. There ain't a man here who wouldn't recognize them. That right, boys? Uh, you have no right to... Here's a me. warrant. It isn't exactly necessary, but I brought it along just in case. What's the difference? Let them search. Your stupidity amazes me, Driscoll. Toss down that carpet bag, Tano. The one with Webster's initials on it. Make sure you get the one you put the furs in. What? Uh, here. Bag. Yeah, I got it. Now well, then. Yes, sirree. Here they are, right on top. What the... How about it, boys? Aren't these Mrs. Collins' pelts? You I, I don't have to tell you how they got there. The engine put him in there when he climbed on top of the stage. Yes, Driscoll, the Indian. But the driver must have seen him. Driver! I was having a lot of trouble with the team then. 
I didn't even turn around. We found them in your carpet bag, Webster. That makes you the receiver of stolen goods. It's nothing but a frame-up. Now you're awake. They can't get away with it. They have, you fool. What's your proposition, Marshal? Well, uh, seeing as how you did have something to do with the raid last night, Mark Collins had all the right in the world to swear out a warrant for your arrest. So there's no point in your suing him. Is she going to prosecute? Well, that's up to you. It's only petty larceny, and you wouldn't go to jail for very long. And, of course, we'll be taking the pelts back, so... If you just sign this paper, giving up all your claims, Mark Collins says we can set you free. Hand the paper over. Jake, you aren't going to do it. Now, what choice have I? Jacob Webster. There. Now stand aside, Marshal. I want to talk to the Lone Ranger. You want to talk to me, Webster? This is the first time we've met. That's right. But I've heard a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you. I don't have to be told that you planned this affair. I want to offer my congratulations. Mine go to Mrs. Collins. She and her daughter and the marshal have learned a lesson without cost. They won't trust you or your agents again. There's just one more thing I want to say. Well? This won't be the last time we meet. I'm sure it won't. The next time, the outcome will be different. We hope so, Webster. We hope the next time you'll go to jail. Good evening, fella. Come on, fellow. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.